This is a hands-on session, uh, but even testing the laptop 40 minutes ago to connect to here when it worked, it doesn't work now. So we're going to use the slides, so I'm going to pretend to be hands-on. Um, okay, so uh, my name's Martin O'Hanlon. Um, I work uh, for Neo4j. Neo4j is a graph database company. Um, um, and I want to tell a little bit about why graphs and Gen AI are friends, or as we would say in the UK, where I'm from, mates. Why they're mates? Um, because like, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but like large language models aren't perfect. And as, uh, and as often as somebody says to you, I just chat GPT, dude. That's the way. You know that this is going to happen, right? <laughs> you know, you know that's going to happen. And the key reason this is happening is because it's not clear. What, what <laughs> the context wasn't clear, right? So I want to talk a little bit about how graphs can help help us do that. Because if we think about this left brain, right brain model, uh, which psychologists don't like, but it works for this analogy. Um, if we have lang language and reasoning and creativity, knowledge, context, and enrichment, LLMs are really good at language, reasoning, and creativity. Not quite so good at knowledge, context, and enrichment. Um, but knowledge graphs are. So um, I'm going to start with what are graphs. So first off, I don't mean these. What are these? Charts, yeah. <laughs> I changed my language when I started to work for Neo4j. I mean these, graphs, graph theory, edges and vertices, circles and lines, nodes and relationships, however you want to describe them. I'm talking about graphs. Because um, graphs allow us to understand the relationships between data, between entities. So Tom Hanks is an actor. He acted in the movie Toy Story. Um, and graph databases allow us to store data in this graph format, in using this graph, graph structure, great for highly connected data. Um, yeah, they do that quite well. But actually, for generative AI, this flexible model allows us to model facts and information uh, in a really efficient way. So uh, this is about graph rag. We're going to start with rag. <laughs> Uh, if you didn't know, retrieval augmented generation. Um, and if we're interacting with an LLM, this is about a simplistic architecture model as I can create. Um, we need to provide context. And vector search or vector embeddings is an extremely good way of doing that. We have some user input. We have an application. We need to provide it with context. We use our vector embeddings to do that. Um, I need to take a drink of water. I think the stress of not going to a laptop work has taken things. Uh, so if you don't know, uh, we can use vector embeddings to represent text. Um, and vector search. Oh, where vector search? For, oh, This is the problem with not presenting live. My slides are slightly out of date. Uh, vectors work incredibly well for, let's face it, the hard stuff fuzzy matching, vague searching, the stuff that 20 years ago, <laughs> 10 years ago, five years ago was really hard and is still hard today. And that's what vectors work incredibly well for. Um, but they, less, they work less well for things like highly specific and fact-based questions, numerical calculations, things like that. Um, so we can help our LLM-based applications by using vector embeddings. They're a great source of that, all that hard stuff, that, that vague query. But we can use our knowledge graph to support that vector search by providing contextual information. So she's a small town girl living in a lonely world. She took a midnight train going anywhere. Um, we can represent that information as a graph. Born, raised, took, going, relationships between entities of small town boy, South Detroit, anywhere, midnight train. We can represent that information as a graph, and we can extract the bits, the contextual information that's most important. Um, because context is key, right? Um, context, we have a job review. I think Neo4j is a great place to work. I'm going to preface this with, Neo4j is a great place to work, right? Because context is king. Um, according to the provided context, Neo4j is a great place to work. I genuinely believe that. However, 
That review was posted by somebody called Emil Efren, who works at Neo4j. According to Emil Efren, the CEO of Neo4j, it is a great place to work. It is a great place to work. <laughs> um, so, knowledge graphs. How do we like create these things? You can do it the hard way. You can absolutely do it the hard way. You can understand your data. Yeah, you can do it the hard way. You can create those entities. You can create those relationships. Um, uh, but I just want to explore a process of doing it the easy way, <laughs> of doing entity and relationship extraction. So I have a piece of unstructured data. This is actually um, the uh, Ed Cassex sub submission from Apple Incorporated. I can't remember from what year, probably 2023, 2024, something like that. Um, US companies have to submit financial in information every six months about their risks, their metrics, all sorts of things. Um, and this is Apple's. So, great source of information, highly unstructured. I don't really want it to look like that. What I want it to look like is that. I want to understand the relationships between the company that submitted it and things that are important to my use case. I've pulled out, you know, asset manager, product, financial metrics, transactions, stock types, things like that. Things that are important to my use case. So that's what I want, but I've got that. So what I do is I do entity and relationship extraction. Um, and large language models, luckily, are a really good way of doing entity and relationship extraction. Um, it's a little bit of code uh, that, you know, does work. Uh, but, you know, push it through a document parser, split it, chunk it, entity, extract those entities and relationships for it, from it, and create, create a graph. Um, and if you know the sorts of things you're looking for, you can create a highly specific graph. If you don't know the sorts of things you're looking for, or if you want to find out, you can get, let it go wild and you'll find all sorts of things that may or may not be interesting to you. Uh, but when I ran this, and I did, I did it for a small section of these documents, these were the things that I was looking for. Um, this is where I want to do a demo, but I can't do a demo. But luckily what I did was I made slides. So, um, thank you, who, who did that? Yay! Um, so, um, if we create a graph of those documents, we do the classic thing, we chunk them up using a chunking methodology that works for us, but we create a graph that looks like this, which is sort of cool, doesn't really add a great deal to the, to the story, but what we can do is we can do that entity and relationship extraction on those chunks. So that when we explode these chunks, we can start to see well, actually, for each one of these chunks, and number 26 there is a chunk, we have these entities that relate to that chunk. So in this case, uh, I've sort of lost the context slightly, but it's probably from this company, this document here that relates to some, some company. We can then extract things like financial metrics, uncertainty and tax, regulatory change, I suspect that one is. This is where... A demo would be great. Um, but we can create a graph of that information. Um, and we can also do things like show me all of, the, all of the products that these companies mention in their financial, um, financial disclosures. So we can start to do analysis on that, on, that on that data as well. For example, this is Apple. As they mention all these products, which look like Apple's products, right? Um, and we can also do things like, well, you know, tell me the things that are talked about within this unstructured data. Help me do analysis on it for this. So this, for example, is uh, uh, factors mentioned in those uh, returns, so risks, financial uh, metrics, products, pumps, so on and so forth. Uh, and we can start to say, okay, well, show me the financial metrics that are important to Microsoft Corporation, and we get information out. But what our graph allows us to do is to see structured data that exists within that unstructured content. And we can do vector search. I want to point out at this point that other vector search solutions are available, ones that scale really well, have incredible support, maybe Quadrant. <laughs> 
Um, I was going to use Neo4j in my demo because I've got it and it's easy to use for me. Uh, but obviously, uh, other vector search is available. Um, so I can search for uh, nodes or chunks you know, based on particular factors. And I get, you know, chunks of text back, as you might expect. Um, but what I can do from those chunks of text, so when I do my vector search, I can use the, the key from that vector search, which is that chunk, and say, well, actually expand from that chunk and tell me the factors, or in, in this case, the risk factors that relate to that chunk, that relates to that company, and allow me to understand from a more factual perspective what information is contained within that graph. Cool. So, um, again, what we do here is we would do a live demo. So what I wanted to do um, is, we, is um, I'm going to show you uh, a, a very simple agent, and I want to ask it this question. So this question is, who are the asset managers most affected by financial regulations? Now, the answer to that, doc to that question is in those documents, but it's very hard to find. And the reason it's hard to find is the documents are structured uh, one document per company. They tend to be highly focused on that company <laughs> rather than the asset managers that look after them. And while the company may talk about their asset managers and may talk about uh, banking regulations affecting them, there is no direct link between them. Um, so a graph can help us do that. So um, this would be a very simple agent uh, that uses RAG, uses vector-based RAG to ask that question. Uh, and when I ran this, and I did run it earlier, because <laughs> I updated these slides, um, this is the response I get. The, fi the pri provided financial documents indicate that various asset managers and financial firms challenged due to blanking, blah, 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 blah. But I get a lot of useful information out, but it doesn't actually answer the question, who are the asset managers, <laughs> right? What I get out is, I don't really know, but the ones that are in there probably face these problems. Yeah. But again, it's still useful information, right? Um, so we change that to a graph rag retriever. And actually, what I've done here is I've used my vector search to find the chunks that are most associated with that question. And then I've used the graph around those chunks, in this case, to find, uh, if you look on the left-hand side, um, I've got this retrieval query. And what I'm adding to, the to, to just the text and the score that's coming back is things like the company name, because I now know the company name. And I'm also adding any asset managers. So as asset managers who own, own companies, I'm actually adding that to the context that, that I get back as well. So I get back not only my vector, but I also get back information that I've taken from my graph as well. Um, and I get back a very different response. I still get the can't provide specific information because like, it's difficult to find, right? But what I do get back is I get back a list of asset managers who were, who were identified and returned as part of the chunks within those documents. All right, cool. So just to kind of like talk about graph rag. Um, graph rag started out as a term that was coined by Microsoft on the back of a research paper that, that they did that essentially said, if you use a knowledge graph in construction in con conjunction with your vector index, you get better results. That was it, <laughs> right? Um, but actually, it started to evolve um, and actually saying graph rag, the term also talks about things like knowledge graph construction, about creating that graph from unstructured data and using relationships, so levering those connections uh, to provide additional context. All right, so if you want to have a go with all the demo stuff that I didn't get to show you, if you go here, uh, you'll find a repo with all the code in it. Um, just a couple of things. I'm going to do a very, very quick plug. Nose 2025, it's the online developer conference. If you want to know more, please go there. Um, but finally, um, if you want to know more about GraphRag and about graphs, um, Neo4j has a, a graph academy, completely free. Go and do some courses. That's most of my job, is creating educational content. Uh, please do that. Other than that, 
Thank you very much. I've finished one minute ahead of schedule. That's the benefit of not doing live demos. Thank you all very much.